podcast. I'm your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live after show. And thank fucking God I included the word unofficial. (gasps) We will get to it. We will get to it. But we are in for a motherfucking show. Okay, because I am livid. No, it's fine. Everything's great. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the summer house reunion. Wicked quick. I just had to say if you watched it, the right side of the room, one couch, All of the girls looked like mermaids. I swear, the shimmery dresses, the way it fit them all, the material, something about the colors. I don't know what it was, but it literally looked like Ariel from The Little Mermaid was having a tea party or something and they showed up on the couch. But what I really wanted to say about this is at the end of the reunion, they bring out a round of shots for everybody. I think it was a shot of tequila, but to commemorate the season and... Carl on the cast, Carl Radke is sober, sober. And we all know that I have a thing about water and sober people because I don't know what the fuck it is. But every time somebody's sober, we all need to like scream at them. Like you're drinking water, right? That's water, water, water. And it's just like, holy fucking shit. There's so many other liquids out there. So basically they all are doing shots of tequila and Andy Cohen is like, but Carl, since you're sober, we got a shot of water for you. And Carl's like, woohoo, water. And it's just like, again, what the fuck? Like, why can't we find out his favorite drink? Get him a little iced tea, some lemonade, an Arnold Palmer, maybe? Come on, it's summertime. I just don't understand why sober people have to drink water. Like, there's literally so many other liquids. And why do we have to point it out? Like, make it so awkward. Like, Carl, that's water. Like, we get it. He's not secretly downing tequila with the rest of the cast. Like, we get it. You're sober. We don't, like, check your liquids, okay? That's up to you to decide to do. So I don't know, just give the kids some lemonade. Then suddenly at the end of Summer House, it gives us a sneak peek of Winter House, which was very jarring for the visual eye because you're watching, again, these mermaids on the screen. They're all wicked tan, glammed up. They're wearing like strapless dresses. So you see lots of skin. And then all of a sudden it cuts to snowy covered mountains and them all bundled up and you're just like whoa wait what the fuck but the entire preview for winter house the entire teaser that they played was just amanda getting hit on the head with a football what the fuck what it, what if that's the most interesting thing that's happened this season that's the clip that you're gonna show to get us all interested in it like oh shit we're in for a wild ride like really there was nothing else I'm sorry I'm an editor as well give me that footage and I will work some magic now on Real Housewives of New Jersey during the reunion Margaret and Jennifer Aiden were exchanging some casual words back and forth and at one point they're talking about looks or whatever and Margaret it's like I could give two shits I could give two shits and (laughs) Jennifer Aiden (laughs) she goes good go to the bathroom go to the bathroom if you could give two shits I just fucking love that response like I could give two shits great then go to the bathroom oh classic all right so I give a lot of shits about what went on today on the June 7th episode of Jeff Lewis Live We had Julie Goldman, we had Brandi Howard, and we had Shane Douglas. Now, there was a big work dinner at Laurel Hardware. Every time they say that, I picture a hardware shop. I can't help it. Hardware? Like, maybe Ace and Laurel are a couple, and their last name is Hardware, and they each open their own business, and Laurel has one restaurant in LA, and Ace has a million franchise locations. So you need to step on it, Laurel Hardware, because Ace Hardware is beating you 
out. Now, it sounded like such a fun crew. I wish we heard what they ordered, though, for food. Uh, That's like my favorite part of these stories. Well, actually, I wanted to. But then at the end of the show, we kind of find out that Julie, Brandy, and (laughs) Jameson were a giant bag of farts last night, which is exactly how they made me feel today. Because, guys, guess what? We found out the big announcement. Jeff's starting his own channel. And Julie and Brandy are doing the official after show. What's the actual? All right. I have absolutely no comment at the moment because I am so livid and I need a night to sleep on this before I comment because I can tell that I am thinking with my emotions. Now, logically, I understand. Jeff Lewis can make as many after shows as he wants. It's his own fucking show. I totally get it. But what it felt like was me getting punched in the fucking stomach. What? To watch something that you've been working so hard on and then watch them give an opportunity to people who already have huge platforms? Like, people aren't going to want to listen to Jeff Lewis Live, the Jeff Lewis Live official after show, and then the Jeff Lewis Live unofficial after show all in one day. You know? Like, way to just crush me as the little bug. And honestly, I don't care how long they've been planning this. It's not like this is my my first week of an after show, you know, I've been doing this unofficial, unofficial after show for my eighth week now, as in today is my 41st episode. I do it five days a week. I turn these episodes over in mere hours on top of so much other work I do. Okay, no, no, yeah, again, we'll talk about this more tomorrow. Right now, I just need to focus on how happy I am for them. I'm so happy for their opportunity. What an original idea. No, genuinely, I obviously know, again, they can do whatever the fuck they want. They've obviously been planning this for a while, <clears throat> maybe, but, um, and I'm sure Brandy and Julie's show will be different or not. Cause they don't even fucking know what it's going to be yet. So guys, if you need any material, you can research the past 41 episodes of Splash of Sass. S-O fucking S, send me some help. I'm just saying this is a story of my life that I do something first and then watch others continue to rise. Again, I'm so happy for them. I'm so, and it doesn't sound like they're getting paid much anyway, so I guess better off I stay independent. But just know today in the JLL studio that y'all hurt my motherfucking feelings, acting like I'm just nothing rude. Okay, so moving on from my feud with the JLL studio to Jeff and Andy Cohen's feud, we finally get to hear the deets about. It's so fucking lame, though. I just, I can't even. I get excited for these things, and then when they talk about it, I'm like, This literally sounds like my five-year-old niece and nephew talking back and forth to it. Like, what? Basically, Andy wanted to come on JLL, but only virtually. Jeff is like, uh, my whole thing is that guests are in studio. So Jeff gives him what I thought was the most fair counteroffer ever. Like, phone in for the first segment, promote your book that I'm so fucking tired of hearing about. Whatever, they have me feeling bitter and neglected, so now I am lashing out at all of Radio Andy, okay? And I do like his books, but just the promotion of it, like, oh my gosh, STFU. Um, But Andy was offended that he could only go on for one segment? Why? Why? Okay, first of all, I totally agree with Jeff. It's such a different vibe on Zoom, and I totally prefer in person. Second, Andy, I'm sure you have more Hamptons trips to go on or boys to play with or your family, like whatever, go, why would you even want to be on the whole show? If I was promoting something and someone told me, hey, I'll give you just as much promotion and you only have to be there one third of the time. Um, okay. We call that a bargain. What? No, Andy just wanted to fight. See, he was just being as bitter as I feel right now. But that genuinely was the pettiest tiff. We're all petty ass bitches and today they tried me. Also, I apologize to Jim Thompson. I wrongfully assumed he was the one that called Jeff an idiot. Idiot! But it sounds like it was Sir Cohen. To be honest, it could have been (laughs) any one of his superiors, really. That's sad. They talk about Jeff's ass real quick. He just needed some reassurance that it looks good after surgery. Julie and Brandy let him know that it was money well spent. (gasps) Luann Delicep, she can do a remix because maybe money can't buy you class, but it sure can buy an ass. 
but um bunch. All right, let's see Julie and Brandy come up with this shit on their after show. No, I'm kidding. You guys, honestly, it's obviously their show and their life. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I mentioned I'm so happy for them all. Um, also Julie and Brandy are going to take calls and do that. So they can, they can do all that. Have fun. Except (laughs) you guys, towards the end of the show, a caller called in about something and Julie was going back and forth with her asking where she was from. And the caller's like, no, I'm not a lesbian. (laughs) She was like, no, I'm not a lesbian. And Julie's like, great. Where are you from? And it was It was just such a great preview of what's to come with Julie interacting with the callers. So, you know what? Sure, there's room for all of us, I guess. What the actual fuck, though? Do you know what I mean? Like, I obviously get that I have no stake in this game, no claim to anything, but imagine doing 41 episodes of a show that you love so much, and then all of a sudden they announce that they're doing the exact same show and no one cares. I, you know, it's just, okay, great. No, great. It's great. Oh, and Brandy and Julie are also doing a rewatch of Flipping Out and making that into a show, which we said on Splash of Sass when Monica Casey was on. Um, again, not saying that I came up with these ideas first. I'm just saying that we're clearly on the same fucking wavelength. Huh? Um, now, Jeff asked the ever important question, if Miss Jenny Poulos is going to be on when they talk about Flipping Out which would be fucking amazing. And Jeff jokes about Jenny doing the theme song because fun fact for anyone that doesn't listen to Heather McDonald's Juicy Scoop podcast, which you should, it's amazing. Jenny Poulos recorded the intro song. I love Juicy Scoop and I love Jenny Poulos, but no offense, I don't love the song. I don't love it. So fun fact, I actually recorded a new theme song for Heather McDonald last year and emailed it to her because guys, that's the type of fucking person I am. Okay. I'm like a tag me in coach kind of girl. Like I don't need you to sit there and train me and do this. Like I don't need to be like, Heather, may I please do a theme song for you? No, I just do shit. Okay. I do it. And then I provide you the content on my own. Okay. So it's not like I'm like, oh my gosh, Alyssa, as the new executive producer of Radio Andy, it would be amazing if I did an official after show because I'm already doing it. So I figure you know. Oh, all right. So whatever. Um, anyways, back to the theme song I sent to Heather, which she ended up emailing me back. She replied that she likes Jenny's version and she wants to keep that, but she was going to upload mine to Patreon to use it as a juicy scoop ringtone. So see people, I don't always talk about it, but I have done so much work. I've worked with celebrities. I've done so much shit. Okay. You don't know me, JLL. And you would have had a lot of fun officially getting to know me. But anyways, I never checked if it was actually on Heather's Juicy Scoop Patreon because I don't pay for shit. But the theme song for it went like this. And honestly, I'm so embarrassed that she posted it if she did because... I know Heather loves singing. We all know Heather loves singing. I'm pretty sure she sang at Jeff's Christmas party, all of that. And I wanted, I'm a writer. I wanted her to sing it and record it. I was just giving her an idea. I'm a fucking idea giver, clearly. (laughs) Um, But okay, the theme song goes like this. It's time for Juicy, Juicy, Juicy Scoop with Heather McDonald, with Heather McDonald. Uh, Yeah, so that was it. Actually, maybe I should re-email Heather and see if she's hiring for Juicy Scoop because Radio Andy clearly treats me like a bag of farts. Again, I understand that they should have their own official after show. That, that was my whole point is that there wasn't an after show. I'm just saying the fact that I've done 41 episodes and then you just act like we've never had an after show, whatever. I just need to chill out. I wasn't going to drink today, but I think I might need a fucking margarita or 12. <laughs> On my Insta story though, um, the background, if you're wondering why it's just a bunch of cats that are copied all over the place, it's just because cats like to copy. So when you copy the cats, <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And again, sure, you might have had this idea before I actually executed it, but I've executed 41 episodes now and you act like I'm fucking trash. Okay, so again, we're doing great over here. Now, I matched with somebody on Hinge last night and he had a meme. So you have to do at least six pictures, but sometimes the boys are so fucking annoying and they put like white squares, like just a blank picture so that they don't, I like you really can't scrounge up six of your, all right. Anyway, so this kid put up a meme 
and it's a cartoon clipboard. And on it is a piece of paper that says, I want to come. And then it spells out the acronym, C-U-M, cultivate my own mushrooms, unsubscribe from modern socialization and norms, meet our alien ancestors, come, cultivate, unsubscribe, meet. That's what we're dealing with, people, okay? It's like I go to sleep and that's the last thing I see and I'm just shook at humanity and then I wake up and I hear about a fucking official after show and I'm again shook at that humanity. So have I mentioned how happy I am for Julian Brandy? I am so happy for you guys. So happy. But now I have to scrounge up other topics because I can't say much about JLL because all we fucking talked about was the official after show. But here on the unofficial one, I will just instead talk about Bama Rush. It was a documentary that was on HBO and... Basically, during COVID and everything, like Bama Rush became this big thing on TikTok. It went viral. Everybody was following these sorority pledges, trying to get in their houses and all of that. So a filmmaker came and tried to break into, it was at the University of Alabama. And we all know, even if you don't know that school, whatever, the South, the motherfucking South, you don't fuck with the South, okay? They get dirty over there. And so basically the filmmaker was following a few girls before they were going to rush. And then during rush, it all fell apart because the rumor started getting out that there were moles, like people that had wires on or whatever were part of this documentary. And so basically the sororities were like, yo, you can pick, be in a documentary or be in a sorority for the rest of your college career and forever because sorority girls are obsessed with it um so but if there's any listeners i love you guys because i can't afford to lose any of you right now (laughs) um so the entire documentary goes from thinking that you're about to get like a peek into the sorority life and all of this and it ends up just being about the documentary filmmaker and how she never felt like she fit in either and how all these girls are just trying to fit in I wanted to rip my eyeballs out. Like it was literally, it felt like a therapy session for the filmmaker. Like I I just was so disappointed by it. The one thing that I learned, which I don't know why I'm even shocked at, is that the fraternities run most of the decisions for the sororities. Like they'll be like, yo, pick that girl, that girl, that girl. We want to fuck her. We want to fuck her. She has a nice tit. She has a nice ass. Line up. Like we, if you want the best sorority, these are the girls we want. Ugh, everything's grossing me out today. Again, this is why I shouldn't talk about it because logically I have nothing to be angry about. But on the inside, I feel like the little kid from The Incredibles, Jack Jack, who just like spazzes and just like bursts into flames. I'm just like, like I literally like poofed into flames when they announced that. No, actually I couldn't poof because I was too busy doubled over trying to rip the knife out of my stomach. Guys, this has been such a fun episode. I am so happy to have been running the unofficial after show for the past 41 episodes, and we are here to motherfucking stay, okay? So I don't know what this all means for us, but we're in it together. I love you guys. You guys are the best, and congratulations, Jillian Brandy. We're so happy for you all. Have a great night, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully I'm happier. Love you guys so much. Subscribe, do all that shit. Check out my Insta story because there's nothing I do better than revenge. Love you guys so much. Bye. Splash, 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 spl